I'm going to do drugs, get frisky with my manager, and form a reverse harem. Kawaii! That's something that could have been thought by a VTuber named Riro Ron, who in late 2023 was exposed as an absolute deviant after her VTubing agency came out to announce her termination from their service within a post that has received 6.9 million views. The announcement of her termination sent shockwaves throughout the VTubing community simply because the alleged extent of what this seemingly innocent VTuber was doing. Don't allow her appearance to deceive you my dear viewer, this person is an absolute freak. Idol came out to say that on the 28th of November 2023, they had terminated Riro Ron's contract. The reason being that she had violated her contract by engaging in activities that were both harmful and dangerous to her, as well as the company. Those activities included, but were not limited to, misuse of controlled substances while live, soliciting fans while live for private offline meetings, accepting gifts from fans in person worth thousands of dollars, and conducting a secret relationship with a member of the idol management team. Let me reiterate, this person is doing drugs. This person is meeting up with fans, taking their gifts and their money, and sneaking around with her company's management. The VTubing community went into a spin because of this. Keep in mind that Riro had only joined her agency roughly nine months prior. However, some sort of inner demon must have possessed her to go right off the deep end because somewhere along the way, she decides to form a harem. I'm not joking, form a harem and outline the rules of how this was going to go down. This is a pretty well-known story in the VTuber world, but I know that a lot of my audience really isn't clued up in this sort of area. Let me say that as far as I know, as far as the evidence has been placed in front of me, this is 100% legitimate. Reroad's gonna say it's not, but as of what we've seen so far, it seems very likely that this is not faked. Her harem requirements were as followed. No minors. Love the Riro. Don't get jealous, but Riro can get jealous. Riro is Mina no Adairu for my stardusts. Whatever the fuck that means. Be respectful and tactful with Riro. Riro chooses if some wish comes true or do something mild instead. Keep in mind that Riro, if I'm not mistaken, speaks Japanese as her first language. At the very least, it's not English but it seems as though she's saying that she gets to choose how hard they go at it in the bedroom on the scale from mild to wish comes true. You need to be familiar with Riro. And lastly, the Harem Project, so she calls it the Harem Project, just getting it out there, is top secret. So you shouldn't tell other stardusts. These are some pretty strict rules, so what do you get out of it? Well, you get to meet up with her and more. This is just one of the many different pieces of evidence against Riro. There is an entire file filled with more than a dozen clips of her making the rules for this harem. And so just to fill you in the best I can, I think I'll play a few of those clips for you now. You want to meet the riddle and I want you to. And I want you to. Well, think about that then. Maybe it is a possibility, even though it sounds very insane, it sounds very insane, but I don't know, speaking to you makes it, makes it sound less insane. Because if you want to be part of the harem specifically, that means you would want, you would, you would see me even without my alien scan, right? <laughs> you would have to see me disguised as a human. <laughs> as my alter ego. <laughs> Perks. The possibility to meet up with not little. Would you like to meet me? Would you like to meet me and perhaps even try me? <laughs> Doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, it, or it can be a date or just a walk in the park as you prefer. <laughs> I can just spend a nice, a nice evening together. 
No miners. No miners in the harem. No miners. This is very important. No miners. I wonder if I'm the only girl from Idol who can pull up something like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that it's fairly easy to say that she was caught red-handed. This folder is surely the smoking gun. And so it appears as though she went through with this harm formation based upon Idol's post and was given some expensive presents when she met up with these viewers. However, as the post also says, that was not the full extent of her devious behaviour. She also had a relationship with someone who worked in Idol's management. This person is thought to be the company's lead talent manager, who's probably the last person you should be boning on the side, but Rira Ron seemed to make it her personal mission to go off the rails in the most unhinged way she possibly could. She also was accused of doing drugs on stream, but as far as I could find, these were only sleeping pills, so it wasn't like she was just snorting lines whilst live. That said, she would later respond to the allegations on her own Twitter account where she would say that she had nothing to apologise for. Even though the evidence is fairly stacked against her, and even she herself would post this meme. I didn't. Totally would though. Ooh, ooh. I don't think that would help her case. But things don't stop there. You might notice that this account that she posted on was not Riroron, and that's because this is Kyoresu, otherwise known as Riroron, before she signed for Idol. Kyoresu's channel is a lot more music related and has almost 500,000 subscribers. In the aftermath of getting let go from Idol, she has since returned to Kyoresu after taking a year's hiatus and has started posting once more. And I have an exclusive update for you guys because everyone that made videos about this incident right after it happened didn't include this development because this is relatively recent. A few weeks ago, she uploaded her first video in about a year. So let's take a look at what she's had to say since her comeback. Imagine getting a kiss of every single internet scene from one day to another, just randomly opening your socials on there. You are absolutely destroyed by every snowflake out there, but it's fine, I can just restart. It's not the first time I'm doing it anyway, right? That's pretty wild, but the song gets even crazier. Take a close listen to some of the lyrics right now. I won't lie though, this music video slaps. Credit where it's due. The entire thing seems to be about her termination, which I actually think is quite a smart move. She seems to assert within this music video that everything that happened was taken out of context, or at the very least, wasn't the whole truth. Apparently she signed an NDA, so she can't discuss what happened. Whether or not you believe her, I'd love to find out the truth of this. So that's where we are today. Riro is trying to launch a comeback as Kyoresu, announcing that she'll start streaming soon. That manager might just be sacked for good, and the general audience have had a good laugh at just how absurd it is that this pink cutesy anime girl has been accused of living this drugged up rockstar harem lifestyle. What an insane story. But of course, that's just one of the many stories I have for you today. Coming up is a game of Smash or Pass that ended in death threats and a racially segregated VTuber award show. But before we get into that, let's talk about a VTuber who was roasted by the entirety of Twitter after allegedly body shaming a Twitch streamer for showing too much skin. This story can be traced back to just shy of a year ago and began with a creator called Eurochan who posted this. I woke up and found someone on Twitch. I mean, wow, is this lewd even allowed on Twitch? And as I'm sure you'll see throughout the rest of this video, oftentimes the most simple of tweets can end in disaster. Initially, a lot of people were joining in on the joke. They were cracking up, making wiseacre remarks about how this woman's breasts look more like two inflatable beach balls than boobs. But very soon, people went in to defend the streamer. More than 2 million views later, and a lot of people who saw this tweet decided to unsheath their sword and declare war on Yura Chan, who was accused of body shaming her. Chat, this chick was like, is this allowed on Twitch? And was laughing at every comment that was like body shaming this chick because she had big titties. Oh yeah, there is a chat. I don't know if you've seen Techie show this one girl on Twitch. 
She's just a girl who plays like MMOs all the time and her boobs are ginormous and she just sits there and plays games. And she's really sweet. And she's, she's really nice. She's very fucking kind. And and so this one VTuber was like, wow, I can't believe I opened Twitch and this is the first thing I saw. That's crazy. You see, this creator known online as SK Uwu is just like that. The people mad at this tweet were under the impression that this appears to be her natural form. And therefore, a lot of critics had a massive problem with Yura-chan because physical features can't be changed and therefore shouldn't be the subject of mockery. Whether or not this is natural, I don't really want to speculate. I'm just giving you guys the arguments for and against. I should also mention that this is very different to a VTuber because SK, barring any surgery, is stuck with her form. A VTuber avatar, on the other hand, is custom made. It's a lot easier to redesign them. Therefore, what might be acceptable for SK Uwu would not be acceptable for a VTuber avatar. People started by saying that Yurichan should just get back to streaming, showing a screenshot of her Twitch account. There are only a handful of replies that have been saved from this viral tweet, and these showed that some of the people that were discussing it were in fact defending Yurichan, claiming that SK's cleavage was excessive. Then things got even worse, as Yurichan decided to start liking the replies that agreed with her. She liked this tweet by Sage the Witch Dragon, which read, I like big boob, but not basketball sized. And this isn't even to mention that Yurichan wasn't exactly the most modest creator either. And she was also posted several times on Yurichan's Twitter with a mouth open filled with saliva, which seems to be quite suggestive. For that reason, a lot of people had a field day in making assertions that this was hypocrisy at its finest and that Yurichan was merely jealous of SK. And bitch, like, you're just fucking mad that you don't. Shut up! Shut up! Let's be real. Let's be real. Not every VTuber look like their model, and she's just mad. <laughs> she's just mad, bro. Oh my god, I had to stop myself from being rude, but fuck, dude. So rude. That girl is just vibing and living her life, man. Flash forward till today, and she's nowhere to be seen. It appears as though this backlash was too much for Yura-chan, and she practically vanished from the internet. Don't get me wrong, it's not like they were a very famous VTuber. The screenshots of their channel showed that they had only amassed 377 followers, but in my research, I discovered her link tree and found that her Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch are now all deactivated. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the stakes that we're dealing with. And speaking of ladies and gentlemen, let's discuss the identity of them in this next story. If you've witnessed enough people talk about VTubers, there's a very real possibility that somewhere along the lines you would have heard someone say something like, oh don't you know they're all just guys with voice changes. And while they might have a point, so far there have been very few instances in which a female VTuber was discovered to be voiced by a dude. That said, it's not out of the realms of possibility. It's apparently happened before, like when this Chinese VTuber allegedly dumbfounded this other guy. <laughs> I found this on 9gag, and the text within this video is Mandarin, so if anyone can read Mandarin, perhaps they could clue us up as to whether this is legitimate and what it says, but this guy was apparently arrested for scamming people as a VTuber. Regardless, back in 2018, an infamous gender reveal within the VTuber community would happen after a creator called Norakat would suffer a glitch that would shock the VTuber world. Mr. Norakat was caught dead to rights. To this very day, his legacy to many people is that guy who pretended to be a girl. And a lot of people thought that because he sounds like this. However, there's actually a little bit more to this story than first meets the eye. First of all, it might be news to you, but there's actually a word for a man who pretends to be a woman through VTubing, and that's Babaniku. So Norakat was a Babaniku. While researching this, I stumbled across a video made by a creator called Venendar, who claimed that Norakat was actually a known Babaniku, so when his true identity was revealed to the web, his own fans really didn't seem to care. That said, he does claim to be a girl on Twitter, 
but I guess that you could make the argument that whoever this guy is behind the scenes, Nora Cat is a character, and the character is female. But whatever the case, as it turns out, it was not his audience, but in fact other people who were clowning on him for this revelation. He even addressed English speakers about that in the clip I showed you before. To this very day, the revelation that Nora Cat was a man is probably the most well-known incident of a Babaniku that I could find online, but I'm very sure that it won't be the last. As I'm sure that won't be the last story I have for you today, we still have plenty to discuss. But if you're enjoying this, I'd love to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already. We're so close to 150,000 subscribers and it would mean the world to me, so please do hit that big red button. Also, if you like what I have to say, check out my Twitter and Instagram, both of them are linked in the description. But in the meantime, if you want more, I'll give you more. You know, there's a little better in this world than receiving a hard-fought award for your good work. Award ceremonies often look vapid and self-indulgent on the outside, but if you're going for a prize, they can mean everything. For our next story, we're going to discuss a group of people who some think have been held back from winning any VTuber awards. Over the past decade or so, there's been a severe increase of award shows dedicated towards content creators. From the streamer awards to the streamies, it makes sense that within an industry as large as content creation, that there would be plenty of awards to go around. Except to me, apparently. Unless there's an award for most prepubescent moustache, I think I'm going to go empty-handed for the next few years. But controversy hit the internet a few months ago now for an award show that some people thought was stoking online racial tensions. That being the Black VTuber Awards, a show announced in early February 2024. As you might be able to guess from its name, this is an award show for black VTubers and only black VTubers. No other races are allowed to participate. And as you might expect, that upset a lot of people who heard the news. Instantly, this ceremony was the subject of criticism, with people saying that this was an award show built on segregation. The argument being that if there was any other award show that gave out awards exclusively to people of a particular race, some people would possibly call it racist. Defenders of the Black VTuber Awards said that the reason why this award show had to exist was because black VTubers don't seem to be on a level playing field compared to VTubers of other races. Based upon my research within the VTuber community, it does seem to be a little bit more overtly restrictive against black creators. There have been plenty of videos made describing how it's hard to be a black VTuber and how sometimes black creators can't even get an avatar made that would match their skin tone. As an outsider to this community, I couldn't even name you a single black VTuber. That said, there's no laws or limitations put in place that would prohibit a black person from becoming a VTuber. And you have to ask the question, is a racially segregated award show really the best way to give these black creators their flowers? I'm going to be honest, I think that the black VTuber awards have been deleting replies because I can see a lot of people complaining about the hate the show was getting, but very few posts in the replies actually complaining about it. Also, I've seen screenshots like this, Donnie Darko 03 nominating this character for the award, and call me a conspiracy theorist, but I have a sneaky suspicion that is not her name. That said, there was one person who was pretty active in the replies, a VTuber called Navi. He has just shy of 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and describes himself as a demonic catboy VTuber. Navi was adamantly against this award show, making the point that black VTubers are not excluded from other award shows for the craft. He said that people wanted to be different and quirky so bad, comparing this award show to a 1960s segregated event. Then Navi did something absolutely wild. To show the contradictory nature of the Black VTuber Awards, Navi decided to make a post announcing the White VTuber Awards. It appears as though people were not happy with this, because shortly after these events, another VTuber called Alira made a video calling Navi's post an extremely racist joke. You really went out of your way to make this horribly racist joke. And be like, oh no, but everybody else is racist. This is gross. The fact that they do not have an understanding of why this is racist is what is the scariest thing to me. There may have been some other crazy replies, but as I said, I have an inkling that a lot of these were deleted shortly after. 
So was this a way to highlight and applaud black VTubers for their work, or a regressive and needlessly divisive call for self-imposed segregation? I'll let you be the judge of that as we move on to our next story. That story being of a woman who was the judge, jury, and executioner in a game of Smash or Pass that led to one of the largest, most needless kerfuffles in VTubing history. Smash or Pass is a simple game. You're given a list of people, and all you do is say Smash or Pass. It's kind of like a theoretical Tinder. Most of the time when you do a Smash or Pass, this is between friends, and the people that are being smashed or passed on are not present. Oftentimes they're fictional or celebrities, maybe classmates or co-workers, but doing Smash or Pass to someone's face would be pretty brutal. However, in the advent of live streaming, if you're one of these celebrities, especially if you're an internet celebrity, there's a fair chance that you'd see someone's reaction to you in a Smash or Pass. YouTuber or streamer Smash or Passes are pretty common, but in October 2023, one of them would go much too far. Meet Cowbell Chaos VT. She's a digital artist, graphic designer, sassy short stack, pot smoker, voice actor, and chaos bringer, who late last year would go in hard on another VTuber's character design and created much a hullabaloo about nothing. This is Dragonspit, who was the subject of a smash or pass between Cowbell Chaos, another VTuber called Freya Allmother, and several of their friends. And this is where things became unhinged because of Cowbell Chaos's extremely adverse reaction to seeing Dragon Spits. What dragon women <coughs> are supposed to look like in the VTuber you know. community. Just pass. Pass, 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 pass. Mm -mm. I want scales. I want muscles. Mm -hmm. I want flat chest because dragons don't have tits. And I want a big ass on them and a long ass tail with wings. And I want them to breathe fire. And drag me into their cave. I don't want some prissy palace bitch looking at me going, <laughs> You must kiss the royal thingies if you want to even touch the royal wings. No, bitch, get the fuck out of here. You're not a dragon. You're just cosplaying as one. Fuck off. <laughs> All right, on tantrum. <laughs> this clip was treated like the end of days. It seemed like the rapture was coming for us, that we were all about to be sent to eternal damnation, that Satan himself was walking among us. On Twitter, anyways. Dragonspit came out to address it and attached the clip of their roast, which gained 1.6 million views. Dragonspit said, Smash or pass streams are fun, and I don't actually care about being passed on at all. It's all for fun and for seeing other VTubers. The issue is calling someone a prissy bitch when they know nothing about that VTuber's personality or lore. Also, it is rude to say, if she gets upset when people don't want to smash her character, then you need to go touch grass. This person and the others were also practically insulting my design and the work that my amazing artist put in by saying that it looked copy and pasted, and like a generic e-girl, and that e-girls were f***ing boring. Please remember that there is a person behind every model, and those people do have feelings. I didn't join to be insulted, I was hoping to see a fun time. Don't be like this especially when on a live stream with the person watching. Thank you for coming to my spit talk. And this was when things got taken up a notch, because while some people involved in this stream apologised, for example, Freya Allmother came out to take accountability, saying that she felt bad for this relentless bullying, the main culprit on the other hand, Cowbell Chaos, dug her heels in and defended her actions. She said that though she's sorry that Dragon Spit felt bad, her opinion as a stranger shouldn't matter and after being called out for what seemed to be an apathetic response, she steered into the skid even further, saying that the apology was only for Dragon Spit to accept, and nobody else. And this is when things became cuckoo bananas, because Cowbell and a few of her friends from the original stream, not all of them, you'll notice it's only about half of them, would come out in a follow-up stream to address the controversy, saying this. Yeah, I did call her a prissy bitch. Cause she looks like a prissy bitch. I'm sorry that my blunt language is so offensive. Oh my god, shame on you, Cowbell. Shame. And it was also cuckoo bananas because Cowbell then claims that she received death threats, she had people telling her to unalive herself, she had slurs made against her, apparently she even had people threatening her family, and that is absolutely wild. But the story doesn't stop there. 
Cowbell seemed to blame Dragonspit for the actions of her fans here, despite the fact that Dragonspit never told her fans to go out and harass Cowbell, nor can we be sure that the haters were actually Dragonspit fans. Some of these people might have just been there for the dogpile, because some VTuber fans are apparently just like that. Cowbell went on a long Twitter tirade after this, writing up literally dozens of posts. Cowbell was saying that her opinion was only that, and since an apology had already been given, all of the people that were calling her out had no leg to stand on because this was only between Dragonspit and herself. Dragonspit would then come out to tell people to stop sending Cowbell threats and telling her to unalive herself, and though you would think that that would be where it would end, then things got even weirder. It seems as though Cowbell then tried to deny that anything ever happened, calling this a bit of a conspiracy and saying that the clip had actually been altered, claiming that they were saying this about someone else. She asserted that the entire thing had been completely taken out of context. Now it seemed unlikely, but stranger things have happened. This allegation that the clip was taken out of context might have been her escape rope, her get out of jail free card, her skeleton key to salvage her reputation. But no. She was then blindsided by Freya, who came out to clarify that no, this clip had not been altered in any way, pleading with Cowbell to stop making her look bad. After this, the jig was well and truly up. She had been foiled by her friend and was now known to many people as not only a bully, but also a liar. Was started with mindless words, ended in lies, deceit, controversy, conspiracy, vitriolic attacks, death threats, and tears. Essentially all of which I discussed in my previous video about VTubers. That one was made almost a year ago to the day, and it's still one of my favourite videos that I've ever made. Go see that one next if you haven't already. If you have seen it though, you could instead check out my podcast that's just launched. I've just started a podcast with tons of other great creators, Brugly, Diatrip, Knight, and Raymundo. The first two episodes are out now, with plenty more still to come. Go watch them, make sure to let the others know that Fox sent you, and don't forget to subscribe. With that said, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.